Hello, and welcome to the 22nd episode of my Failed Franchises Rail Operators series. Today, we are looking at the Intercity Cross Country franchise, and the first and only operator of this franchise, Virgin Cross Country, and whether their tenure as an operator should be deemed as a failure, whether this be their contract being stripped from them, or their franchise simply being deemed poor by the public and industry. Do like, subscribe, and consider joining the channel for exclusive perks. Thank you. Upon the privatisation of British Rail in the late 1990s, the Department for Transport and the Strategic Rail Authority formed the Intercity Cross Country franchise as a franchise which private companies would bid to run. The new Virgin Rail Group bid for the new Intercity Cross Country franchise, as well as the Intercity West Coast franchise. In November 1996, it was confirmed that Virgin had been awarded both of these franchises, with the new Cross Country Trains Limited company being set up for operations. Virgin began operations of this new franchise on the 5th of January 1997. Virgin won a 15-year contract on the basis that they would replace their entire fleet with brand new tilting trains by the end of their contract. Virgin Cross Country would operate an extensive timetable covering much of the UK. The core routes would be from Penzance, Poole, Brighton, Paddington and Portsmouth towards Manchester, Crewe, Newcastle and beyond into Scotland via Birmingham New Street and either Preston or York. Elsewhere, Virgin Trains would also run services from Swansea, as well as summer Saturday services to Weymouth and Ramsgate. As for the fleet that Virgin would inherit and thus aim to withdraw within 15 years, this included HST sets, Class 47s, Class 86s, hauling Mark II coaches, as well as Class 158 Express Sprinters. Virgin got to work immediately on upgrading the cross-country franchise, simplifying its route map and increasing its frequency with new rolling stock. In May 1998, to coincide with franchise requirements, Virgin Cross Country introduced new services to Portsmouth and Liverpool. Elsewhere, in December, Virgin confirmed that they have struck an £858 million deal with Bombardier, eventually rising to over £1 billion for the construction and subsequent maintenance of 34 Class 220 Voyagers and 44 Class 221 Super Voyagers, with all but four of the Super Voyagers being tilting trains. The Voyagers would be constructed in both Wakefield and Bruges, and would have a top speed of 125 miles an hour, promising a huge performance, reliability and comfort upgrade to the previous local hauled stock, with Virgin setting out some Voyagers for the potential use on the Virgin West Coast franchise for services to Holyhead and Scotland. Virgin coincided this order with changes to how the franchise would operate. Following Stagecoach's 49% acquirement into the Virgin Rail Group, the group announced sweeping reforms to its franchises, including new plus bus tickets for 21 towns and cities, five direct bus links from towns to stations, including stratford Penaven to Rugby, no quibble refunds for delays and cancellations, and a new forum to enable passengers to have their say on Virgin Cross Country's operations. Overall, the changes were deemed to be a step in the right direction by Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott. However, the final cross-country service from Kent, specifically Ramsgate, ran in September 1999, with Kent being cut off from the rest of the rail network henceforth. Going into 2000, and the first body shells of the new Voyager trains began appearing before testing began in December. 220001 passed its first test, consisting of a 15-mile trip between Bruges and Ostend, with Virgin's founder Richard Branson on board. The entire Voyager programme was high-risk, high-reward, with Virgin needing passenger numbers on the franchise to rise to at least 30 million to avoid defaulting on its franchise due to revenue issues. However, even in 2001, before the Voyagers entered service, Virgin were having their own revenue issues. The Department for Transport confirmed it would not be able to give any more financial aid to Virgin, leading fares to rise by almost 10% in May 2001, with Virgin blaming the rises on the Hatfield crash. Elsewhere, in January, the first Class 220 was delivered to Britain. The new fleet was left waiting in siding for several months due to safety concerns, with many laughing at the fact that Virgin were operating some of the oldest stock in the UK, whilst having a whole new fleet sitting collecting dust in sidings, with Virgin aiming for the first passenger service of this revolutionary high-speed DMU to be in May 2001. Indeed, testing commenced successfully, and on the 21st of May 2001, the first Class 220 Voyager entered service, appearing on just a few additional Birmingham to Reading services per day, until the 23rd of July, when the first timetabled Voyager service ran from Birmingham to Brighton via Gatwick Airport, marking the beginning of the end of the traditional local hall stock, 
which had ploughed the trade on the cross-country route since the late 1960s. By August 2001, four-car voyagers were now replacing seven or eight-car local hauled services to Manchester, leading to complaints regarding huge overcrowding, with some services being reverted back to local hauled stock for the time being, whilst all voyager services were run as eight-car units until the rest of the fleet, including the super voyagers, could enter service with 35 daily timetabled local hauled services still running, with HSTs and local hauled stock still being the norm. Virgin stood at 20 Class 220s to accept by the end of the year, with many more being used for training purposes, meaning there were only actually a small number of units which could be used in service. Regardless, the first voyagers had entered service earlier than their May 2002 target, and initially wooed passengers, drivers and enthusiasts. As for the 221s, they were still some months off, However, Virgin had formally been given their first class 221 Super Voyager in late 2001, but the tilting mechanism was still some way off. Elsewhere, in December 2001, Virgin confirmed, after experiencing rapid passenger growth, that they would retain some HST sets, refurbishing eight HST sets under the name Virgin Challengers, for use on proposed services from London Paddington to Manchester via Cheltenham, with services to commence by the end of 2003. 2002 was the largest year of Virgin cross-country operations, with a number of large-scale changes coming into play. Firstly, Virgin's franchise was changed with new management contracts coming into use, meaning the franchise would no longer run for 15 years, but would be extended year by year. Also, Virgin confirmed it would be withdrawing the last of its local hauled stock by the end of the year, being replaced by the Voyagers and Super Voyagers. Class 221 Super Voyagers would finally enter service in April 2002, with 13 entering service in quick succession, leading to a huge increase in local hauled service withdrawal. The remaining Class 220s would also enter service, with there now just being a handful of local hauled services per day, with many ageing Class 47s and 86s receiving heritage repaints to celebrate their operations. A special passenger service ran from Penzance to Birmingham on the 19th of August, being formed of 11 coaches and hauled by a heritage liveried Class 47. On the 30th of September 2002, it was a goodbye with the old and a hello to the new, as Virgin launched its groundbreaking Operation Princess timetable change. The change was hyped as the biggest timetable revelation since the war, with Virgin cross-country services leaving the new mega-hub at Birmingham New Street once every seven minutes. Services would be condensed into four core routes, with half-hourly services from Birmingham towards York, Stafford, Reading and Sheffield, with hourly services continuing to Edinburgh, Newcastle, Bournemouth and Plymouth, with Blackpool North joining the cross-country network for the first time. All services, bar a few remaining Class 158s and HST sets, would be operated by the four- or five-car voyagers, with a new shuttle service from Birmingham to Swindon also introduced, whilst Virgin would also continue operating to Liverpool, Brighton, Portsmouth and Swansea. Unfortunately, the timetable was far from a success. Despite Virgin promising reliability to increase to over 90%, this never happened. Virgin was forced to temporarily replace its Voyager fleet with HST sets due to huge reliability issues and capacity problems, with the Voyagers having far less seats than the HST sets, leading to huge overcrowding on many services. The Voyagers and their reliability issues were resolved, but their issues with overcrowding on the new timetable were not. Overcrowding got so bad that Virgin were forced to scrap cheap fares, extend journey times to high delays, introduce more rail replacement buses due to a lack of stock, and remove stops from the timetable if services were too busy. The new timetable change promised to revolutionise travel with Virgin Cross Country, but it made things much worse, mostly due to a lack of carriages on the new Voyager trains, as well as a failure to deliver the West Coast mainline upgrade on time and on budget, leading to infrastructure issues and poor reliability with this being blamed on rail track and network rail, with Virgin Cross Country averaging 54% punctuality for 2002 to 2003. Eventually, the Strategic Rail Authority had to step in, cutting 106 services per day from the timetable from September 2003, completely removing Poole, Portsmouth, Swansea, Swindon, Paddington, Liverpool and Blackpool North from the Virgin Cross Country network. Despite running a more frequent service than previously with, on paper, a similar if not higher amount of seats on services compared to the loco stock they replaced, a huge influx of passengers due to the new trains and increase in services had led to the overall timetable being a huge failure, with Virgin also culling some services to Cardiff, Wolverhampton, Stafford, Lancaster, Bolton, Oxenholm and Penrith. The Virgin Challenger HST programme was also scrapped in September 2003 
with Virgin also withdrawing the last of its Class 158 Sprinters in the same year, leaving the franchise with just Voyager trains. However, it wasn't just the timetable and the trains that were the issue, strikes became an underlying problem during 2003. In March, conductors on 14 operators, including Virgin Cross Country, suggested their role was being reduced to Kit-Kat sellers instead of protecting passengers, with 1,400 conductors out of 2,100 voting to strike with a three-day strike commencing in March and April. However, Virgin Cross Country were able to run a mostly normal timetable, but overall punctuality for the franchise during the start of 2003 was a dismal 47.6%. The woes continued for Virgin when, for the second consecutive December, Virgin faced reliability issues with its Voyager fleet, with a fault being found on the Voyagers, leading to all the sets being temporarily withdrawn to conduct safety-critical checks. This led to services on the 2nd of December being hugely disrupted, while services over the following days were curtailed to south of Edinburgh and cut from half-hourly to hourly on its main bulk routes. In 2004, Virgin confirmed that the Virgin West Coast would be receiving some of the Super Voyagers from Virgin Cross Country, for use on its Hollyhead to Euston services to enable the replacement of the HSTs and Pendolino local hall services, leading to a slight decrease in capacity for Virgin Cross Country. Elsewhere, Virgin hired HSTs from Virgin West Coast, Midland Mainline and GNER, as well as Mark Free coaches, to provide extra summer Saturday services to Paynton and Newquay, as well as hiring Class 67s and Mark II coaches for summer services to Paynton. Virgin also hired standby Mark II carriages from Riviera trains from September 2004, which ran on some Manchester to Birmingham services hauled by a Class 90. Virgin also hired some Midland Mainline and GNER HST sets to occasionally operate Edinburgh to Plymouth services due to a lack of voyagers that were in the fleet. Elsewhere in 2004, a Virgin cross-country train from Bournemouth to Edinburgh was taken on the wrong route. Instead of travelling via Stoke-on-Trent and Macclesfield and towards Manchester that way, the train was routed, accidentally, via crew, where it was forced to terminate due to engineering problems. Also, reliability for Virgin Cross Country was finally on the up, following the Hatfield crash, strikes and the implementation of Network Rail for Railtrack, Virgin Cross Country were now into the mid-70% mark in terms of punctuality. However, with an extra £5 billion of taxpayer money being spent overall on the railways, value for money was certainly not at the forefront of the UK rail network, including Virgin Cross Country. By July, the Strategic Rail Authority no longer existed, with the Transport Secretary now holding power over the railways, with local bodies, including the Welsh and Scottish Parliaments, also gaining more power over the trains. More importantly, the announcement came with an interest in changing the franchising map. The Department for Transport confirmed proposals on modifying or completely scrapping the intercity cross-country franchise. These potential changes came about in August 2004 due to Virgin's failure in securing a franchise extension, with some worrying that the whole cross-country franchise would be split and long-distance services completely axed. However, the Department for Transport denied any potential culling of the franchise, despite potential savings of £246 million if the franchise was split up. Regardless, for the first time since 1997, Virgin's futures of the Intercity Cross Country franchise were up in the air, with many speculating that the end would be nigh. 2005 was a quieter year, with 2006 being much more eventful. In September, the DFT announced it would be asking for tenders for the new Cross Country franchise, with the Department for Transport confirming plans to change the Cross Country franchise completely, with regional services introduced towards Stansted Airport, Nottingham, Leicester and Cambridge, which would be incorporated from the Central Trains franchise, as well as the culling of Cross Country services from Birmingham International to Scotland, which would be incorporated into the West Coast franchise and extended to Euston. This would also mean that the next operator would also now operate regional services with Class 170 Turbo Stars. The new franchise would begin in November 2007 and would last for eight years with Virgin, Arriva, First Group and National Express bidding for the franchise. Virgin Group Investor Stagecoach would also bid for the East Midlands franchise. In September 2006, the Voyager's build quality was praised after a collision with a car in Cottenthorpe, York. The 1425 Plymouth to Edinburgh service was partially derailed after hitting a car whilst travelling at 100 miles an hour. Despite sadly killing the car's driver, the train, although derailed, suffered no casualties, with not a single serious injury reported. A Virgin spokesperson suggested that the Voyager was amazing due to it staying upright, despite derailing at 100 miles an hour. In October, 
Richard Branson asked then-Chancellor Gordon Brown to cut fuel duty on new biofuel for its Voyager fleet to enable the company to be more environmentally friendly, with Richard Branson promising a £1.6 billion investment into renewable energy over the next 10 years, with the fuel cut duty eventually authorised after Virgin Cross Country ceased operations. In June 2007, heavy rain hit much of the Midlands, leading to a huge disruption on the railways. Services around Water Orton and Warwick, both on lines Virgin Cross Country used, were flooded, leading to the closure of the lines for several days. Elsewhere, the Cross City Line was also affected, with Virgin Cross Country and Virgin West Coast not stopping at stations between Wolverhampton and Coventry due to the heavy rain. Finally, Virgin began using a Class 57-3 temporarily on services from Newcastle towards Birmingham and the South due to lack of overall capacity from January 2007 with this being one of the last things Virgin Cross Country did as an operator. This was because, by July, the Department for Transport had confirmed that Arriva had won the new Cross Country franchise, despite Virgin suggesting that they would want to reinstate services to Portsmouth, begin a new service from London King's Cross to Teesside via Nottingham and York, as well as upgrading all voyages to five carriages if they won the franchise. Arriva, however, promised a 35% increase in seating capacity, despite losing 20 Class 221s to Virgin West Coast, suggesting that the reintroduction of the HST sets would be able to cover this and boost capacity. Cross Country would also introduce Wi-Fi on the Voyagers and introduce new ticketing and reservation booking systems, as well as at-sea catering. The franchise would run from November 2007 until March 2016, just under nine years, with the last Virgin Cross Country day of service being on the 10th of November 2007, before handing services over to Cross Country trains ending just over 10 years of Virgin operated services. But can we deem Virgin Cross Country a failure? Well, it's a mixed bag in my opinion. Despite bringing in a whole new fleet of trains and successfully replacing its old rolling stock, they did severely cut services due to the failure of Operation Princess, handing over the franchise to Arriva with a much shorter network, with huge overcrowding issues due to the lack of carriages on the Voyagers. The Voyagers themselves were, on paper, a huge upgrade, However, a lack of future-proofing for an increase in passenger numbers led to them being hugely unsuitable for the services they were expected to operate on, with this very much being the case today. Overall then, I would suggest that Virgin Cross Country were indeed a failure. However, some of their blame must be put on Rail Track, Network Rail and the Strategic Rail Authority for their mismanagement of the railways during the early years of privatisation. But what do you think? Am I being too harsh on Virgin Cross Country, or perhaps too nice? Do let me know in the comments below, and a huge thanks for watching today's video. Do consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Also special thanks to my first class members, Callum Martin Bell, Crispin McKee, and Random Username 2040, as well as my business owned members, Andrew Bowen, Anthony Harris, Anthony James Moore, ARK, Connor Grieg, Craig Mitchell 43, Gordon Walker, J Teco, and Lewis C21. You can get your name on this list from as little as £2.99 a month, and help me to make my videos. I really do appreciate it, thank you. Also, huge thanks to everyone that let me use their footage for today's video. You can find their channels in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my Twitter, Discord and Instagram in the links below. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.